Now, in our previous discussion of galleries, it's pretty clear that they can be used not only for shot matching, but also for saving off different versions of looks that you can recall later. But imagine you're working on several different versions of looks, your client isn't quite sure what they want, and so you're saving them out as stills, and maybe you made a tweak after you last saved off a still, you overwrite that tweak, pulling up a different version, and it just, you've now blown away some work you didn't save off. That can be very kind of disheartening. So there's another set of tools here in Resolve, literally called versions, that allows us on the same shot to have multiple completely different looks if we want to, or very subtle differences of the same look, and we can quickly just flip between them. Let's see how that works. What I'm gonna do is on this shot here, I'm gonna apply two very different looks. I'm gonna come up to my Stills 2 folder. I've saved two looks off of here that ship with DaVinci Resolve very shortly in a couple movies. We'll be looking how, at how I found these. And what I'm gonna do is just grab this version and drag it. And now I've pulled this look on top of this shot. And I'm gonna clean this up, right click and clean up the node tree. So we can see what's going on. There's a circle being done, grading on the outside of the circle, grading on the inside of the circle, and then an overall green wash is being applied to this. Now, what if a client says, you know, I love the uh, through the viewfinder look, but what if we wanted more of a moonlight look and kill the viewfinder thing? All right, I could do that. I can right click on this shot in the thumbnail timeline and Notice that what's active right now is a check mark on version one. Well, it turns out we can have multiple versions of color grades on a single shot. To add a version, I have to come up to local versions here and create new version. I'll give it a name. Let's call it Moonlight. And you don't see the name right now because by default, DaVinci Resolve will show you the codec you're working on, but if I want to see the name of my versions, I just double click in here, and there it is, Moonlight. So I can see these other shots don't have versions, so they're blank. This shot now has two versions. You're gonna see the name of the version that's active. Also notice what happened. When I created a new version, it copied the active grade into the new version. It's assuming that you're not gonna do a completely new version. You're probably just gonna kinda riff off of a theme that you've already worked on. It's okay, we can go ahead, reset all grades and nodes because we are gonna do a completely new version. But I've still retained this night safari look. I'll right click, version one, I'll load that up, and here's our night safari look with the node tree. I'll go ahead and rename version one tonight's safari, and let's now develop our moonlight look. I'll load that up, and I'll middle click on moonlight, and copies this big crazy tree. Let's clean up that node tree. Let's click on it again to clean it up again. There we go, it's almost there. Now I'll make it a little smaller so that it fits within the node graph. And that's the node tree that created this particular look. And so now I can very quickly flip between versions. There's also a great keyboard shortcut for moving between versions. You can find it up here under color and next version, previous version. So command or control B, command or control N. So you can quickly flip between your versions and if you've got a client in the room it's a lot easier than pulling up that right click menu, scrolling all the way up and then selecting load. You can also add a new version by pressing Command Y, and you see version three has been created for me. I don't have the name dialog come up, so I can quickly work. I could rename this later if I decide I want to. Between galleries and versions, you can see that really there's a lot of power hidden here in DaVinci Resolve, and as I mentioned earlier in this training, a lot of it's hidden in a lot of right-click menus, so it's really important you get used to right-clicking all over the place. You never know what feature will be suddenly very valuable to you that uh, is lying there undiscovered.